So what is an X? An X is an open source build system that provides tools and techniques to improve developer productivity. What a marketing term. So is it like Webpack? Is it like V or ES build when we talk about like build tooling? Well, not really. It allows you to run your builds, your lints and tests in your workspace. And it allows you to do that in a much faster way. So it applies things like caching, faster and more intelligent parallelization. It also has things such as scaffolding mechanisms. So to create your project, to pre-configure your workspace with tooling that you might want to use. So all these things hopefully then lead to an improved developer productivity. An X is built in a modular fashion. So at the very core, you have the NX package that you can install into your workspace, and it comes with the basic fun functionality that you might need, such as running your tasks, applying speed measures such as caching and distribution, and it also comes with workspace analysis capabilities. This project here, for instance, has been created with the Quick CLI, and we can easily add NX to this one here by just adding it in the dev dependencies. Alternatively, we can run the NX at latest init command, which will guide us through the setup process more easily. And so here, for instance, we can specify which operations are cacheable. We can specify some more options. And then what will happen in the end is we will get a single NX package that is being added to our workspace. But why would this be useful? Well, for speed. What we can do now is run commands directly through NX, or what NX has also done here is to prefix some of the commands with NX exec, meaning that if we run npm run build, those will be triggered through the NX pipeline. And this means that if we rerun the command again, it will be immediate because it has been pulled out of the cache. Similarly, what we also can do is run multiple commands. So we can run npx nx run many dash t and then give the, the build, the lint task and potentially more that you have in your workspace. And now nx runs them in parallel as fast as it can. Also, for instance, the build has already ran before. So obviously it will be pulled out of the cache and not rerun again because we didn't change anything relevant for invalidating that cache. Now, clearly things like parallelization and caching make even more sense in a monorepo. So here, for instance, this is a PMPM workspace setup that has some example applications and next the Remix app, and it has a couple of packages, so a product list and a UI component library here. So behind the scenes, NX creates a representation of your workspace. So it perfectly is aware of how the relations within the workspace look like. We can actually go ahead and visualize that by running the NX graph command. And this shows us a visual representation of our workspace, having here the Next and Remix app that depend on the Awesome Card products library, which in turn depends on the Awesome Cards UI library, which is also direct dependency of the Remix app. So you can see this structure, which NX behind the scenes also uses for optimizing the setup. One such optimization is, for instance, how NX runs the tasks, keeping in mind the dependencies that might exist between these packages. For instance, here we have the Next or Remix app, depending on the product list, which in turn depends on the UI package. Now, in order to be able to build the product list, we need to build the UI package first and then go back up in order. Now, if we run NX build Remix app, NX waits on two dependent tasks to be built first, which is exactly the UI and product list that it builds in sequence. Clearly, we can also run multiple tasks as we did before by running here build, test, lint on all our workspace. And again, this will make use of the caching as well as obviously keep that dependency in mind when it parallelizes the tasks in a more efficient way. All we need to have for NX to work in such an environment is a single NX package at the root package JSON of your workspace. Now, NX is then able to automatically figure out that this is an NPM, YARN, or PMPM workspace, and it will correspondingly trigger your package JSON scripts. This is a very easy setup, and it's also easy to migrate towards if you have an existing setup of a monorepo workspace. Now, as your workspace grows and it becomes bigger, you might want to get more support in terms of generating new packages and scaffolding them out, abstracting some lower level tooling and pre-configuring that, and in general, get more consistency in your workspace. Now, this is where NX plugins come in, which you can optionally add on top of your monorepo. Plugins are usually very technology specific. Let's say you install the NX React plugin, then that one will provide you specific code generation facilities for React, 
lower level tooling abstractions for React and also automated code updating mechanisms for React specifically. And similarly also for other frameworks that are supported by either the NX core team or provided by the community. To set up a new NX workspace from scratch, we can use the create NX workspace command and that will then guide us through the process. So here, friends, we can immediately choose the stack. Let's say we go with a React application. We don't go with any specific framework, but just pure React. And then we might want to choose this integrated monorepo, which is a monorepo that uses and leverages NX plugins. Now, once we open this up in VS Code, we can see the React application is already there and has been generated for us. So we get already some components. We get the startup React templates here and also task for building, running, serving, linting, testing that React application. You also see the pre-configuration aspect here in that we already get an end-to-end -end test pre-configured for that React application. So we can already go and write end-to-end -end tests for it. Now, if you want to go ahead now and create some libraries in such a monorepo workspace, there is already a libs folder here. You can totally rename it to whatever you prefer. And in an integrated monorepo where we leverage NX plugins, we usually use code generation to create such libraries. So I can go and run NX G or generate, give it the name of the plugin, which is an NPM package that you can find in the package JSON, in this case, NX React. It has a library generator, it's called lib, and I can give it the name. So let's call this product list. This will now ask me a couple of questions. So what unit test runner do you want? I want a vtest. I don't want to have this built. And what happens is it gets created here in my library folder. If you don't know these commands, install NX console, which is a VS Code plugin also for IntelliJ, which allows you to generate these commands, but in a visual way. So we can generate the same library here but having that in a form display where we can fill out the various options and flags and we'll run the same command behind the scenes. So once you have created this library, what happens is that it will automatically already be mapped in the global here tsconfig base JSON at the root of our workspace. So we can see this path alias, which then allows us to go ahead and easily import it into our application. So I can just go ahead and say import from this library and the actual component that has been created. Now, where does that live? I can directly jump to it because we point directly to the entry point to this index.ts file of the library. So all the code navigation will work out of the box. And this is simply a component that has been created in this library, which then gets exposed over this index.ts file. And so you can see how this is much more integrated in the sense that it gives you much more things out of the box that you don't have to think about and especially how to stitch things together. So here already we have a React application configured with Vite. We have Vite test configured for a library that is also easily exposed such that we can leverage it then within our application. You could even go ahead here and do more stuff such as generating a storybook setup inside this library because it might be a component library or do things like adding here Tailwind support to our React application very easily. Now, having such an integrated NX workspace that leverages NX plugins is not just about providing code generation abilities, but by having such a structure where NX has these plugins that execute the builds tasks for you or run the tasks behind the scenes, it has much more control over what is going on and can therefore also be much smarter about optimizing certain processes. And that's, for instance, how an X, if you create a TypeScript project behind the scenes, automatically is able to create project references. So TypeScript project references to speed up your workspace compilation by leveraging some of the TypeScript caching mechanisms that come built in. Something that otherwise you would have to set up obviously by hand and also keep maintaining over time as your workspace grows. And finally, these plugins often also come with automated code upgrading mechanisms, something that is highly underestimated, but being able to run a script that automatically updates your dependencies, as well as configuration, as well as code to bring into the latest version can be a huge time saver in keeping your workspace up to date and have the latest security patches installed. So I hope this was helpful to give you a broad overview of what NX is about. To learn more, definitely go visit our docs at nx.dev docs.